What's happening folks? Back with another reaction, back with some more Gary Newman. Indeed, I went through both albums of Two Way Army as well as some of the bonus tracks. I think there might be one or two further versions or remixes of tunes that I've already reacted to remaining. I can circle back and get those later. But I do want to get back to the pleasure principle. Once again, shout out to Han Solo for sharing. And the point where I suspended the record, we were up to a tune called Observer. It's a single word title, those tend to be tougher to get a read on, though fair to say, I've learned that Gary, both under his own name and in Two Way Army, tends to go toward futuristic, sci-fi, technological, dystopian, android type of themes, so I would expect maybe it to be an observer of a electromechanical type. Independently, or strictly speaking, an observer is someone with a frame of reference or a point of view relative to other entities, events, or processes. So any of these concepts could be relevant. Let's see what I can pick up on a first listen. This is Gary Newman. The track is Observer, and it's from his 1979 album, The Pleasure Principle. <laughs> Very, very new. remarkable for two reasons. One, it does sound very Gary Newman-esque as I've come to know his sound, a bit edgy, but also very electronic. And indeed, I love the the contrast of the that hard synth rhythm with that dreamy type of synth following it. It had this nice, you know, hot and cold, light and dark type of contrast, but fitting together very well. I thought about a minute and a half in it was going to be an instrumental, and then I figured, wait, hold on, I think there's a couple times he's done that to me before, and sure enough, the vocals came in right after that. And then sounding like he could spend all the hour, all the day, all a lifetime observing this other person. So if that's the case, then it's something that is set 
in its particular way and intent on observing someone, and if that's the case, it makes me wonder again if we're talking a mechanical being, a robot that will outlive a human and therefore can watch a human for its whole lifetime. I'm not sure there was enough there in terms of the actual lines on the page to get a sense of a narrative. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe there was, you know, a couple lines that I didn't fully capture, but it sounded more like a snapshot, just like this being that is willing to sit in its frame of reference and just continue to observe. So again, it felt mechanical, it felt perhaps robotic. The ending, or not just the ending, those the pauses between the site between the measures, I guess, where it had that heavy chord just held and held and it would resonate very deeply and richly. I enjoyed those moments a lot. And then in the end it seemed to do that even longer and it unwound a little bit and then right as it would roll back into the next measure, bup up, and that was it. So I like the way it it sort of did a pump fake in the sense that I thought maybe it was going to come back for one more, even though one moment earlier I thought it was ending, and then it did actually end. So, yeah, it was a, a clever and cheeky ending. <clears throat> but ultimately, I guess the main thought I have is that it sounds very much like his musical wheelhouse, which is quirky, unusual, futuristic, and also evocative with the electronic sounds. So. A cool return to the album. I think there's only a few more. Let me see, I have the Discogs page open. Yeah, three more, but one of them I've already reacted to because <clears throat> one of the remaining ones is Cars. And uh, shout out to Doug who sent me that, I think it's like a seven inch, which I already reacted to Cars on that. So yeah, I'll skip over that, but we still have at least two more. So let me know what you think and I will see you next time. Peace.